it said call the uh, March 8th meeting to adjourn. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, oh. we're are we here? We're not. <laughs> we're all set, right? Count Okay, and we'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Start off with approval of minutes for February 8th and February 22nd. Um, yeah, I have reviewed both of these uh, minutes and had one small modification, uh, and uh, I believe that was corrected. So, um, as the current drafts indicate, um, I move that we accept. Both sets of minutes, February 8th, 2023, and February 2020, 20, February 22nd, 2023. Too many 20s in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a 20. Second, 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 second. Uh, as amended. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. All right, first one, NACC 301, 81 Turnpike. Greg Hawkmuth, uh, Williams and Sparages here presenting the applicant for 81 Paddock Lane. We've had a couple discussions about this, this project uh, to date, and the way we left the last public hearing was we requested a continuance to allow us time to put together a um, formal waiver request to keep the shed in its current location and to uh, formally dis describe alternatives um, that would help support keeping the shed in its current location. Um, so we did that, um, and we, we submitted a letter. We submitted the waiver request form. And we submitted some photos of the area where the leaching facility is, just so the commission could see what that looks like. And we also submitted a little sketch with, um, with the two alternatives uh, that we discussed. And at the last hearing, I didn't, I didn't have all the information to talk about why the, the shed couldn't go in the front yard. And it's, a, it's actually a zoning requirement. It can't go any closer than the front range of the house. So that's, that's not an option. But there were two alternatives. Um, there we go. Uh, the one to the top right of the plan behind the existing leaching facility is the one we discussed at the last meeting. And that is an option. It would locate it 50 feet from the wetland. Um, it would comply with the 30-foot sideline setback. Any shed over 64 square feet has to meet the uh, setback requirement for that zoning district, and here it's 30 feet. So that is an option, uh, but we wanted to keep it off the leach bed. And you can see what happens there. You have to do a little bit of clearing in the buffer zone, and that's what those photos show. That's the area that would have to be cleared. Um, we, I should point out that the revised plan that we'll talk about in a minute does still propose some clearing over the leach field. We talked to our clients and we told them it would be a good idea to remove any woody growth that's growing over the leach trenches. Um, the roots tend to want to find water and they, they tend to clog pipes. So you gotta, you know, getting that off the septic system makes sense anyways. But we'd still have to do about 1,500 square feet of clearing of wooded buffer zone with this, this alternative. And that would be to al allow it to be dragged parallel with that that top trench. Uh, the second alternative would be where it's shown right up against the, the deck, pretty much. Again, it complies with the 30-foot setback requirement. It's at least 50 feet away from wetland flag A2. It does put it very, very close to the deck, um, and a corner of it actually lands over the, the septic tank. Um, and it also blocks access around that side of the house. So in a perfect world, we'd we'd have to do some clearing there as well, just to allow access around uh, the back of that shed, but that is an alternative. 
Um, but to help uh, soften the waiver request a little bit, we, we are proposing some mitigation on the revised plan. And we've got a 112 square foot uh, buffer zone enhancement area that we proposed right above wetland flag A5 and A6. And that's shown on the, um, on the revised plan, um, not, this, not this sketch. Uh, but the current shed results in a 56 square foot encroachment into the no build zone. So that buffer zone enhancement area would be 112 square feet. So two to one ratio. Um, and I think it is important to note too that again that the shed was not put there by our clients. Uh, we did our best to figure out how old it is and it's tough to tell from the aerials but it's been there at least uh, since 2012. The photos before that are too grainy to tell if it was there then. Uh, but our clients did not put it there. Um, and I, I'd love to be able to tell you that the wetland line moved and that when it was put there it did comply but I, I can't say that because we didn't do the original delineation and and I'd be shocked if that line would move four feet just based on our observations. Thanks, Greg. Yep. Brian? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I, I guess I'd rather see, you know, less clearing, obviously, um, especially within the 50 foot. Um, so this, the clearing though for the leach field, is that new? Was that originally Yeah, proposed? so that's, that's what you see on this revised plan here, not the sketch that I included in the waiver request. And we're just proposing to clear the woody growth over the leach trenches. Okay. So would the, like the leaf litter remain and, and all that stuff, or would it be just? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They don't want to turn that into lawn. Okay. It would just uh, that's, be to, That's what. Yeah. Exactly what I'm getting at. Okay. Yep. Yeah. They don't want any more lawn. Right. But right. getting those roots out of the system makes sense. Okay. And they can do that by hand. There's nothing substantial there. Yeah. It doesn't look like there's anything, you know, huge in there. Mostly, mostly just brush. Yeah, and it, it looks like there's a lot of bittersweet, unfortunately, and you know what those roots look like. Yeah, yep. Some of those pipes could be compromised already. Right. Um, yeah, and that close to the wetland, obviously, that's, that's another issue. Um, I, I'm okay with leaving the shed myself. I'd rather not see an area cleared to, to move the shed. I think it, that would potentially be more impactful than leaving it there, and with, especially with the extra mitigation. I think that would check the box for enhancement under the variance requirements. Um, so that's all I have. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm in, uh, in substantial agreement with um, Commissioner Hale. Um, I I think the the least impactful option is the proposed uh, alternative to leave the shed in in its current location, um, and I that's that's the option I favor. So I would. Uh, recommend that we accept this uh, proposal as presented. I'll say. I have uh, no objection to the waiver request at all. I don't need it, Joe. Yeah, same here. I, I appreciate the effort that you put into it. Uh, obviously, this was not a shed there yet. We would uh, be having a different discussion. The alternative wouldn't be a favorable one. But uh, since it is there, for all the reasons you stated, it's fine. Um, the woody vegetation clearance again it's just a, a failure of the leaching system just inevitable at some point in time so controlling the woody veg is, is pretty important now what do you i try to tell from the pictures just what is coming up what isn't yeah so is it you got a pretty good handle on where those trenches are you can or just clear the whole area of the woody stuff so one of the notes on our plan it requires the uh disposal system to be located prior to construction. So they're going to have a company go out and send a camera down the lines. So we'll know exactly where it is. There was not a good as-built plan on file. This is back when they really weren't requiring them. Um, so we used a combination of the design plan and the Title V inspection report. So it should be pretty close. And just based on where substantial trees and saplings are growing, it's next to the area that we show as a leach field. So What's the biggest tree that's out there? Uh, over the leach field, yeah. it'd be less than two inches. Okay, okay. And the root intrusion from adjacent trees is nothing you're looking to address. It's really just within the confines of the design reserve system in the actual system, right? That's right. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to be able to 
cut all the roots that are growing in, but we're not proposing that. Just yeah. hand removal. Well, the reality is if you don't do this, that's exactly what you'd have to do when the thing did fail. You just yeah. rip the whole th darn thing up, and it's exactly what you'd have to do. Um, and actually, I would go so far as to say, as we consider uh, order conditions, is that that's a perpetual condition that they're allowed to maintain that Great. free of woody vegetation. How so? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. And then we have to. What about that? Any, anyone in the public that wants to. Oh, any talk to any this input team? from uh, Pat or Glenn? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thanks. Go to Rockport. <laughs> I'm off. <laughs> one road in, one road out. <laughs> it's a road. Yeah, if you want to call it that, yeah. Um, next one is an RDA for 14, oh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, 242 request to continue until uh, April 12th. Second. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, and that's unanimous. Are we waiting on something on that? Uh, Which one is it? Zero. Trump, I Or are they just? Uh, they're in the midst of responding to peer review comments. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And, and they put a call in to me today to say that they are moving forward. And they bespoke at the last meeting saying that they, they are doing it. Uh, SWIFT and all that. They're doing stuff. the SWIFT, yeah. So it's, it's all, they got it all under control. So that Mr. Was Green must have arrived. Yeah, exactly. Uh, next one, it, all right, so this, we get a motion, do we have a? I seconded it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. Uh, RDA 1405 Basswood Circle. Chairman, members of the commission, my name is Paul Bergman. My company, Bergman & Associates, put this application together. Um, several months ago, I think it was last summer, last fall, I came before you for an RDA, literally for the deck next to this deck on the back of the uh, Oak Ridge Village condominiums. I'm not sure if you remember. Um, the RDA was recommended by, by Amy and Taylor. Um, for this one, which is about half the size of that deck, which actually got built, by the way, this deck is about half that size, and it's to the southwest, as you can tell from the sketch. Um, the applications are virtually identical other than the size of the deck. And the only other thing I would offer is um, on the last application, we were going to call for the removal of the concrete piers that held up the old deck. And what the contractor actually did, he installed helical anchors um, right next to the concrete piers. So the concrete piers were actually left in place. And that's what we proposed to do with this one. Yeah, that project went very well, clean and tidy. And so I would expect the same for this project. Any questions, Ryan? No. Any questions? No questions. John? No questions. Motion. So I recommend a negative three that requires a pre-construction meeting to inspect installed erosion controls, uh, dumpster for demo materials to be placed on the uh, shared paved driveway, and then a post-construction meeting uh, to verify compliance. What's the closest distance of the deck? Hmm? 35 so I've got to ask the real question, is the, um, the tree that's right up against the deck, is the intention to remove that tree? There's no intention to this. There's, I mean, there's one actually touching the deck in the photograph. Would we not take that down? And should we go out that as part of this RDA? Hmm? Oh, so that was Taylor's. I think it's up to the tree. I mean, it's close, but I don't think it's touching. You're not intending to take any trees off? No. Okay. No. <laughs> That's why I was wondering. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, it's close, but. Do right, we have a motion? Second. Second. Right. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? 
And that's unanimous and one abstention. One abstention. Thank you. Amy, what you just said for uh, requirements for the, for the decision, yep. uh, th those are put in writing so they can get to the contract. Oh, yes. Yep. I met with Mike McGuire yep. last time, yep. and he set up all the erosion controls and um, kept me abreast through just, viewpoint just and everything. So. Okay. Yep. Those are put online, or how can I get a copy um, oh, of those? Oh, I can, I can CC you about? on the email, okay. and I email them out. Did I not do that last time? I'll do it this time. Okay. I'll try right. to give it to him. Thank you. All right, thanks, Paul. Excuse me, we'll don't run away. Oh, don't go away? <laughs> the, uh, that tree, uh, What is, is that, that, is that? that's in the buffer zone? Yes. But it's not in the no, no disturb. It's in the it's in the, it's 50. In the fifty, right? It's between twenty five and fifty. I'd go so far as to give me permission to take that tree down should it be needed. I, yeah, I and think we're talking needs. this well, one, right? That's a yeah. because that comes over our tree thing, a potential safety issue. Yeah. So, D would you like the tree taken down? No, we'll give no, you permission. We don't though. like anything. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're doing a real good thing here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're trying to help you. Oh, so yeah, your applicant. So, <laughs> sir, in the photograph that's the one immediately yeah yeah that one it's that, that one. one right all right I, I i can let the i can let okay we'll, we'll put it so you guys want me to put this in the condition the one yeah. to give, allow give, them give them an to, option on that tree option. okay yeah yeah which is a, which is one tree right i, I agree yeah. with you i mean i don't know how much that tree moves around in the wind, but look, it would be a shame. Look at the staining on the. On and the other, it looked like the, 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 the bed. If it if it started hitting the brand new deck, that'd yeah. be unfortunate. I would, I would suggest taking them all down, the, except the big, the three, the three side ones, because that one, the next one looks like guys? it's, it's, it's got already, a broken leader coming it's up. It's already off broken the top off. Of it. Yeah. And 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 this looks all dead up here, on the top part of that first tree. Right. You can, you can so the modification on that would be if we could revisit revisit it. It will allow the taking of all three trees that to be cut flush to the ground and no removal of stuff. That's, that's Simple as dead. that. Yeah, that's not. That that's that pretty. Is dead. The middle one. That's, the other, and the other one, the back is kind of funky. Yep. They're all outside the no disturb zone. Yeah, they're all yes. yeah. They're fair game. <laughs> if Taylor is coming out for the pre-construction, maybe they can decide that at that time. You want to take them down? You can. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll just so okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Are we all set? So what now I you can leave. Okay. So. Now you can leave. Thank what you. What I said was cut flush to the ground <laughs> and flush. not stuff. Yeah. From this commission often. Yeah, we're, we're, we're telling people to cut trees down. <laughs> we just don't want them coming back. <laughs> Go through it all over again. Yeah. 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 The tree landed on a brand new deck he just put on. Yeah. Uh, okay. Again. We're going to take down anyway. That's what I thought. Right. That's what, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have to recuse on the next uh, two four two eighteen fifty. Okay, one. We got that, Jamie. All right. Uh, two four two eighteen fifty three Merrimack College. Sure. Uh, good evening. Jeff Ketters with VHB. Um, I have uh, Dave and James with National Grid here to uh, provide any technical responses if, uh, if needed for some clarity, but hoping to, uh, to pick up from where we left off uh, at last hearing. We had a chance to uh, hopefully hear your feedback um, and respond to, uh, to put some updated alternatives analysis together. Um, just for a quick background on, on where we were before, uh, this is for the proposed storage building uh, structure currently in place, um, and we're still finishing up uh, utilities, um, stormwater basin to the plan left of the building, and uh, you know final stabilization stabilization of the site. Uh, the original plan under the uh, notice of intent proposed uh, power service to the storage building roughly in the, the option shown in blue here from an existing electric manhole uh, directly to the building. Uh, upon further review, uh, we understand uh, that's high voltage and we need to step it down. So uh, the alternatives analysis, the re revised analysis in front of you um, is what we believe is uh, three feasible ways to bring power to the building. Uh, we did pull out some of the previous options that uh, that were not technically feasible, though just included to, to kind of show a, a, we were trying to take a look at every possible option and happy to walk through 
these these kind of three scenarios that we have in a little more detail. Um, so I guess uh, first option in, in blue is uh, pulling from an existing electrical manhole. It would require a uh, pad-mounted transformer shown uh, just off of the edge of the pavement to the to the east there, uh, and uh, with s uh, secondary service up to uh, the new electric meter. Um, regardless, all options are shown. Uh, we would ensure to provide erosion controls uh, around the perimeter at any downstream end of, of the work. Uh, option two, we'll call it the, the pink routing, is uh, a variation of the previously recommended option. Uh, and what it's uh, intended to do is utilize as much existing pavement as possible. So, uh, the intent would be to pull power from the existing utility pole just off the corner of the building. Uh, unfortunately, we're not able to, to go underground at that exact pole location, but the proposal here would be to locate a new utility pole as close to that as possible, um, just off the edge of the pavement, so any underground uh, or at-grade disturbance would be, uh, would be confined to just the edge of the pavement at the new pole and and within the pavement in an underground duct bank. Uh, similar with the original proposed option from the last hearing, uh, there would be a short span of overhead wire from the existing utility pole to the new one that would require limited uh, above grade pruning um, of one or two trees in that, in that area where the dash line is, is shown. Uh, and I guess the third option is chasing back. Uh, we, we started talking about considerations here uh, last time. It's chasing back to a utility pole closer to 114, which does keep all work outside of the 50-foot no-build zone. Um, and it would be uh, we're proposing trenching uh, a, as narrow as possible of a duck bank, basically uh, – each of these options, we're talking about a 18-inch to 24-inch wide trench, but it would really be, um, you know, the size of a of a small mini excavator to get back in there um, to dig it. So it would be a proposed trench from the existing utility pole shown uh, to the right edge of the red line, uh, just outside the 50-foot buffer uh, through the vegetation to the corner of the building. Um, so this one would have a little more act, uh, impact to existing trees in that path, uh, but the intent being we would try to keep it as uh, further away from the, from the wetland resources. So happy to answer any more questions on detail. Wanted to, uh, to review these, these three updated versions uh, with you and, and get your feedback on. Thank you. Ryan? Um, yeah, so obviously the, the pink and the blue options are the least Im impactful, right? Um, but the pink sort of is in line with what you were saying last time, Joe, right? Like, that, that, that's what you were advocating for Yeah, previously. you changed the colors on us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, because we, we were we kind of in agreement of uh, option two, if I remember correctly. Well, I guess it would be my turn, I'll elaborate. Well, no, I don't mind keeping it, but I just want just yeah, to, I, to I bring that of, up. because Out of what we're hearing, I have an opinion of which is the more favorable. I think okay. I have an alternative analysis that I can wrap my hands around right. So just to be clear, the pink option was similar to what we saw, but before at the last hearing, it was all overhead wire. Right, right, correct. Which, so now the, which over the time would require more pruning. Exactly. Yeah. Initially and over time. Right. Right. Correct. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't really see much of a difference between the pink and the blue option, but um, maybe some other commissioners have an opinion on that, so um, that's all I, all I have. Jack? Yeah. Um, is the blue option the only one that requires a transformer and pad? Uh, the only one that would require that on a on a pad mounted surface. Yes, in the in the pink and red, the transformers would be mounted to the utility poles. To the utility poles. That's safe to say, Dave. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, and it looks to me like uh, the pink on the pink option, the trench runs through pave, a paved surface. Is that right? Correct. Yep. Okay. And um, I, I guess I don't know where where the uh, where's the existing pole that the that the power is coming from. 
to go to the new pole right yeah, there right where the curse okay, is yeah. right there so it looks like there's minimal tree pruning required for that option for that short run correct okay um, yeah, um, yeah I guess I, I have no more questions uh, just if you, was it we, did you say you had to pull a second pole with this existing pole is to do this work uh, on the pink option, yes. Is it possible to zoom in a little bit? Um, yeah, so the only, you know, I think we talked last time about ideally it'd be great to just go underground the whole way. Right. Um, the only reason we can't do that is there's there's already too many risers on that pole. So we we can't drop directly on that existing one. The, the thought would be to locate a pole as close to that as possible. Okay, so you're putting a second pole next to the one that's already there. Correct. And Correct. then going underground all the way to the the, uh, the, the Correct. box in the, in the pavement. So Correct. So virtually no tree disturbance. Just uh, the way you're putting the pole. Correct, and, and that would be upper limb trimming. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I see the blue alternative and the pink alternative is really the only two logical ones that remain. And, you know, even though he is, the blue is entirely in pavement, uh, it does ultimately require the transformer. So I think the detriment there is one is having a transformer that's going to require a certain amount of maintenance. And nowadays, transformers don't carry any hazardous materials in them, right? Pad mountains mounted? No more PCBs. Yeah, no more. So that, that much is not a factor. So I think it's an economic issue that you can't do that for no other reason. Um, but that doesn't mean that the pink doesn't have some uh, merit to it. Uh, the additional pull that you're adding, I'm going to ask this to the to grid itself, uh, guy wires on the dead end, is that going to require guying straight back opposite the, the feed? Probably. So that's going to be away from the wetland. Um, yeah. And going to leave the existing pole there because it already feeds underground elsewhere. Yeah, there's, that's two, there's two poles there. They both are risers. One goes to the transformer and one feeds the manhole that you initially wanted to come from, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the pole that would place is pro approximately 20 feet, it would be approximately 20 feet from the um, existing pole, and would guy it, we, all we need is about five feet, four yep. or five feet. And again, it's opposite the wire feed, so it's really in the pavement and not, now is that I something that's viable for? I would try to have it parallel to the pavement, and then he could uh, build his service under the pavement. Okay. It, it, you know, whatever, if, if that's what you're trying to do. Well, what I'm yeah. looking at is where the pole is, I know it's schematic, but where the pole is shown, yep. if you have to brace it back as a guy, it might yes. put it into the pavement, and Merrimack themselves might say that's undesirable to them. I wouldn't want to put it in the pavement because any, any vehicle you're gonna get back, hit. there's very little space back there yep. anyway. Okay. So we would have to back up, and someone would accidentally go over it. That's why I'm saying that I would have the new pole that we'd place approximately 20 feet away parallel Therefore, the, the guy wire would be parallel also and probably about three or four feet off the, off the pavement. Got it. And he can make his way around and underneath the, underneath the existing pavement for the service. So yeah. even though that's like 25 feet further, it's still in pavement. It's outside the resource <laughs> area. It can be protected. And then future maintenance is almost nil. You can even place a bollard there or something just, yeah. just for, for good. So I think you, you've convinced me that alternative, the pink alternative is, is the more desirable alternative out of the three at this point. I'm all set. Um, I just want to comment that I think your alternative analysis is excellent, and the diagram that you have here is is one of the best pictorials I've seen of an alternative analysis ever. So <laughs> I, I personally appreciate that. I don't have any questions. It's a team effort. <laughs> just a quick question. So uh, for the pink option, you you know that you won't you won't be interfering with any other subsurface utilities or water sewer nothing like that we'll uh we'll be trenching alongside the the other the high voltage line does run between where we're showing it and the wetlands so our uh there is there is a duck bank we'll be running parallel to as well as a uh sanitary line from the existing building but not crossing oh yeah there is a roof drainage lines that do go off the back of this building yes though. and yeah those are going to be deeper than than the Conduit yeah, trench, I it, imagine. Is it correct? Yeah, there's there? there's one right where the cursor is, and there's yeah. another one we may have to cross yeah. just to. The, yes, correct. But you should um, be you should be over that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll, uh, the 
move toward the pink. Is that right? All the way, all the commission. Yeah, that's what I'm, yeah, because we have to, no we're, we're going to prove something. We have to tell them which one. <laughs> yeah, pink, 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 pink. pink. Okay. pink. So is it a waiver? <clears throat> it's in exist it is a waiver. It's in a, it's an existing pavement, but they've done the alternative analysis to justify right, the so waiver. So it's a waiver. So we need to move the waiver first. Okay. So I move that after considering an exhaustive alternatives analysis that we approve the alternative shown in pink. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Instead of calling it the pink, is that option Option three. Oh boy, I think we have a legend on there uh, <laughs> on the bottom right. We maybe have the we pink can. One. Uh, yeah, especially with the two sheets. The other ones are red on the other sheet. First time it was blue. Option two was blue before. That's what I wanted. Do we need any other motions? I just want to put the, the, what option is on the, to the motion. Do we have a waiver request? No, do we actually have a? I know we voted, but do we have the, the paperwork? For it? Yeah, the, All right. there's a right. narrative, the whole Got narrative. Yes. What is it? What do we have listed as? Option? I believe option A, yeah. Option A? Option A, pink. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Oh, Alfred. Batman. What? We have the vote. I didn't think we voted the modification. No, we, we, just, didn't. we just voted. No, the we just voted on the yeah. waiver. Yeah. So I move that we grant the modification as requested uh, for the use of alternative A. We called it. Second. Think one. Aye. Aye. Opposed. And that's unanimous. Okay, that one's finished. Uh, next one. Small project NACC 30356 Lachenat. Hi, I'm Jessica Auerman. I'm the homeowner at 56 Autron Avenue. I was just um, <clears throat> get asking for a small uh, project application to install a sliding door in place of a, a window that's in the back of my house so I can have direct access to my fenced-in backyard. Um, it'll be have just a small 3 by 7 landing right outside the sliding door, which is required by the zoning or the building law, as I understand it. Um, and then three stairs down, since it's about three feet off the ground. And that is, um, I have an intermittent stream behind my house uh, beyond the fence that I had measured, um, delineated, which is uh, the 50 foot um, barrier comes within nine foot, 10 inches from the outside of my house. So this will be still have a three foot, 10 inch zone, a little buffer between the stairs and the 50 foot. So I guess it is a property, um, she had De DeRosa flag that area to get the closest point. I, I agreed with that and um, he staked the 50 foot so she could plan accordingly and um, so this is entirely within lawn and you know it's I think I think we approved the one next to it. We did. <laughs> I remember this one. Yeah. Yeah. And this is. Yeah, it's all of 42 square feet. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure. And, and from the looks, from the looks of the area, it looks fairly well. new. And there's no, there's no real BDW. It's just sort of a channel, a channel right. in the ground. Yeah. 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 Right. Any Jack. You did all your work ahead of time, and it makes it a much smoother process here. So, uh, nice job. Thank I have you. no other questions. Help. All set. I'm all set. All yeah. set. Sure. Okay, motion. I move that we uh, find this project to qualify as a small pro project uh, category A. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Accordingly, I move that we approve the project as proposed. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Well, sir. Thank you. And I have the conditions too. You guys read that, right? We did. Okay. Didn't right. state them, but we read them. Okay. All right. Uh, Thanks, Jessica. As, right. as recommended. NACC number 302 173 Campbell Road. Hi. Good evening. Hello. Before you speak, I'm at 
We're going to save you some time. Okay. <laughs> well, you can introduce yourselves. You can introduce yourself. I'm Kristen Prescott, Jeff Johnson, yeah, owners of One Center. Yes, again, yes. So. <laughs> All right. I'll pull up the schematic. All right. All right. So this is a small project permit for two activities, one being a 6 by 10 shed and the other being a stretch, a stretch of privacy fence along uh, the property line. Um, the wetlands have been delineated, but and they're also um, flagged for the uh, neighboring project at 161 Campbell Commission recently uh, approved. And um, so we were able to field verify these measurements on the plan. Um, the proposed shed is the is under the 100 square foot threshold for a small project and it's going to be about 90 feet from the wetland and the shed, um, I'm sorry, the, the fence shown in uh, green here will be just outside the 50, so between 50 and 100 um, and it is going to go through a wooded area um, but Taylor went out there, took a look and uh, talked with the homeowner and, and to get the, sh the fence in the wooded area, all that needs to be done is to remove a couple of downed um, pine tree saplings and removal of a couple of burning bush, burning bushes. Um, otherwise, they're going to work around to preserve trees. I know they want their privacy, so they'll keep as many trees as possible. Um, so there's no real no vegetation removal aside from that invasive shrub. Um, so Thank you know, you. so. Ryan, any questions? Uh, you agree with all that? Me? Oh yes. Um, the, we we want to preserve as many trees as possible for privacy, but we also just are nature lovers. So um, the whole purpose of the fence is to help preserve the trees to keep the leaves from being blown in and things like that. So. Yeah, I guess another question is about the floodplain. So, what's the floodplain elevation out there? Is that yeah, on the you had to ask me that, didn't you? Um, so, you had a LOMA done, or someone did, to take the structures out. Yeah. Um, so, the fence and the um, shed would be within the floodplain, but um, the shed, it's not like they're filling I mean it, yeah I mean I guess my concern is more just putting a shed in the floodplain even it's it's putting a building in the floodplain mm -hmm. ultimately um, mm. 60 by 60 square feet it's not subjected to compensatory flood storage or, or Loma FEMA requirements well I'm talking wetlands protection act like I mean right if so oh, it was another resource here you mean uh, yeah, as a yeah, resource, floodplain, as a resource. yeah I'm not talking about FEMA yeah. Um, I think it's like a, the tail wag of the dog, though. If it's, if it's not a building because it's below the 64 square feet, which it is, 60. Well, that's under our bylaw, though, right? Not the Wetlands Protection Act. So there's, right, there might be, yeah. two, there might be com competing yeah. interests here, but we got, you know, we got to meet both of them. Um, what is the act you're saying? Uh, Wetlands so, Protection Act or a different act? Yep. Okay. So, so there's the Wetlands Protection Act. That's yep. the state law that we administer, but then there's also the local bylaw. So we're sort of referencing both interchangeably a little bit, but yeah. um, you might have hit on hit on a conflict right there. Uh, well, I mean, at the end of the day, the Wetlands Protection Act still has to be met. So if you're putting fill in the floodplain, that doesn't mean that they can be put on some piers above the floodplain elevation or something like that, and we could call it sort of de minimis fill for the post or something like that. But what is that floodplain elevation and yeah. Right. So in other words, if the floodplain elevation is two feet off the ground, that means, what, 60 square feet, 120 cubic feet of material is in the floodplain, right? And, uh, and the same thing with the fence. When the applicant next door, next door, yeah. Foster's application, I think the floodplain, the depth of the water was almost nil. Well, yeah, and that's, I, I guess like that's... two inches. Well, it... So, that's, that's the question. That's what he's asking for. So floods, so I've got the loma up. Okay. But do we have a survey? Like we don't have a survey though, right? Um. Oh no, no not. 
not for the small project. So it's 114. 114.3. So taking the structure out. Um, well, how does that make sense? So would putting it on some cement, like cement blocks, kind of solve that problem? Is that the answer right there, Brian? That if it's so the flood so one percent is the hundred percent is the hundred year flood. If that is elevation one fourteen thirty three, the lowest adjacent grade to this lot is one twenty one, which puts it seven feet higher from the floodplain. So then, how would the rest of the property still be in the flood? Right, that I, think would it's, I think the it's not. It's not. It's not. I have a letter from FEMA saying it's not. I think it's saying it's not in the floodplain. Well, it says portions still remain in the special flood hazard area and right below it. Right, portions uh, remain. In the right. Space. So, <laughs> study right. underway. Thank you. So it says if if you scroll up just a little bit. So what is removed from the special flood hazard area? Just the structure. Just the residence. And that's based on the. That's going to be based on your first floor elevation too, mm -hmm. I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily what's below it. Okay. So let me just. I don't. Oh, I, actually, I read that differently, right? Let's go back to that. Okay. What they're saying is, the outcome is that the structure has been removed from the special flood hazard area. Down below, they're simply defining what the special flood hazard area is. It's just a definition. It's not saying it's subject to it. They're saying that's what it is and that the structure has been removed from it because of all the evidence to the right. This is not in floodplain. So and that's what this loan was saying. Well, I disagree with you. It says portions really? remain in special flood hazard area zone A, right. right? And above that it says what is removed from the special flood hazard area is just the structure. I've, I've worked with these before. It's, yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. Right. So to get around this, instead of having just the shed sit on stone. Put it up on piers. If we did it on that's what piers I, right, or. Exactly. But what, is that ele what elevation does it need to get to, right? That's the question. Oh, for the, shed, for, the shed, for the lowest member of the shed to be above the floodplain? Right. Ah. Oh. See what I mean? That I don't know. It's great to seven feet. <laughs> flood. They, they was a, we issued a certificate of compliance how far back on this one? 17? 19. On the ASBO plan, let's hope an elevation is given that ties back to NAVD. Was that 85 probably this was yeah, tied to? NGVD for some reason? Or really it's NAV88. Yeah, it's not, a, not NAV85. It should yeah. be it. But whatever so that can be converted easily. Yeah. If yeah, has, yeah that, that would do it. If there's a that would show it. If we have evidence yeah. of what that elevation is in this vicinity, yeah. we can do we can get that. Right. The ASBO plan has to have that though. Okay. Is that it? This camera morn and this is And I mean I get it's just a shed, but at the same time, if it does flood it's a shed going getting potentially right rocketed down. On the floodplain, so <laughs> that's that's what happens, right? That's part of, that's part of what we're trying to do is to keep materials out of the floodplain. So, okay. Would it be so, on the neighbor's plan because they just built a 1,200 square foot house right next to where we want the shed? Um, possibly, right. no, probably. Yeah. Well, Ryan's right. But 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 I think it's I think it's not an issue. We just don't have enough information to make that not an issue. Exactly. Yeah. I think we just need to make sure this shed is above the floodplain elevation, plain and simple. Whatever mechanism and if, if, the, foot, if the footprint is above the floodplain, then you can put it on the ground. Right. And if it's there, but it's only a couple of inches deep, you just got to pick it up off the ground a little bit. Exactly. Yep. Like I said, put it on six by six. Oh, right. Two inches. Exactly. Maybe, it wasn't, maybe the question wasn't raised. It was. Yeah, it's not. He, it's he not prohibitive a, in any way. It's just his, a matter uh, of how you do it. Making sure it's above the floodplain. He had to change how he did his. Uh, so we don't typically continue a small project, but I think the evidence, is that it right there? Is that your eyes, Bill? This is, no, this, this is, is the neighbor. Next door. Can we make this a condition? Would it be above the floodplain? Yeah. Good. All right, so we've got right. some, we have it's some. Approved um, before the, it's approved before yeah. the construction begins. So, right, Amy, I, I mean. Well, right, so I'm, 
I've well, got 161 plan up. Subsequently, be impractical. To, I think we should know. So, Sorry, was that Amy? 119.5, okay. 119.77. So five feet above flood. 119. No, it's not. You said 114 was on the plan. Let me see it. Yeah, you're right. It said 121. To go back to the Loma. Okay. Is that the vicinity of, of the abutting? Of this, yes. This, this is this is basically oh, so this is basically elevations. where it is. So one point. Right. So it's it's flat, going relatively flat from 119.28 to 119.7. So let's call it nine. 119.5. So that's five feet above. Five feet above the, the Loma. Okay. All right. So we're good. Well, so you got lucky. It's a non-issue. Oh. <laughs> got the information. Okay. <laughs> good. That doesn't happen that's often. It. All right. We took a bit, but at least we know now. So they're good. Good discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So any questions, Jackie? Um, just comments, really. Um, no, I do have a question. The um, the fence itself looks like it's proposed to come up to the 50-foot no build, mm -hmm. um, and I understand that. This is a small project. We can't have any um, waiver requests for this, but I, well, I guess my comment is that post inspection is important um, for two reasons. Number one, the 50-foot setback, uh, that it stops short of the 50-foot setback, which is a requirement for a small project. and um, Secondly, that uh, I see that there is a proposed six-inch critter path beneath the bottom of the fence so that... That's what we were told was required. Yeah, yeah. So we need to just verify that in the field. And um, I think the setback for the shed is um, more than adequate. Uh, so I would be in favor of... Um, granting approval for this. So just to note that our surveyor did put um, a survey marker at the 50 foot so that our fence wouldn't go beyond, um, okay. so that the people installing the fence know where it needs to end. I would go six inches or foot inches to be safe. Oh, yeah, and sometimes those markers I, I are moved people, too. I ask people all the time to do that. Why does it have to be 25? Why don't you make it 26? <laughs> yeah. You know, so there's no question. No whoops. Because even with the survey, Sometimes the fence guy ain't, isn't so accurate. There's a rock in the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any questions, sir? Uh, no questions. No, sir. I'm all set. No, no questions. Sir. Motion. So we have category C and H, sheds and fences. So I'll move that we consider it to be a category C and H. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. And I move that we approve it as proposed. And I have conditions. Issues. Conditions. Conditions. Excess soil Subject to not the following conditions incorporated in my motion. Okay. Pre construction meeting with the Commission uh, Conservation Department. Um, excess soils from the post to be taken off site or moved outside the buffer. A six-inch gap at the bottom of the fence shall remain for a, to allow wildlife passage and water flow, and then a post-construction inspection to verify compliance. And that last condition, you think, addresses um, Louis and Jack's concern as far as making sure oh. the fence is within the 50 or outside the 50? Um, well, we can add one or add during the pre-construction meeting. We have. Um, well, I think they told us it's already staked, so verification. So that's there. Yeah. And we just, you know, make sure it's those mark that it's inside of those markers when it's done. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Is the pre-construction meeting what we already have with Taylor, or that's no? I think it'll be with your fence guy. It should Got be it. probably with your fence guy. Okay. Just, just so we're all on the same page. Agenda sheet. What's my agenda sheet? I have a motion. I, I'm sorry. We have a motion and a sorry. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Thank you. So I'll be issuing that uh, probably late this week or early next, and then we can arrange when you're ready Thank to meet. You. Okay. That's Thanks right. for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Three, two, four, two, three, zero, three, twelve, sixty, Salem Street. Two four two three zero three. Where's COCs right now? Okay. So um, this property is 
going undergoing a transaction, the closing attorney inquired whether this order had gotten a certificate of compliance. We found the COC that was all signed and minutes to support it, but the boxes were never checked off. The, the closing attorney wanted to just mark the box off, but I thought mm, I'd check with uh, town council first, so she suggested that I uh, ask for permission to check off the box. <laughs> well, just so we're covered. <laughs> so, so does that require a motion? Please. Please will, check the box. I will, I will move to check uh, the grant box. the authority to the administrator to resolve this. This looks like the... Conservation Commission Hall of Fame, by the way, who voted on this the first time around. Actually, you know, <laughs> if you look at the signatures, you and I had a conversation the other day about the sh shiny, shiny, mm, shiny shoulder effect. Yeah. Kyle Shaney. Oh, right oh, right oh on. okay. Bob Bidso, Willie Vincent, yeah, yeah, Debbie yeah, Moore. Yeah. This is the uh, NACC Hall of Hall Fame right here. Wow. Yeah, no question. Yep. 1989. None of us were on the commission in 89. Like the 89 Celtics? I, I, I went on in November of 90. We served with, we served with Shaney and, and, um, I, I served and Bob Mansell. I, I did. I absolutely did. Wow, ah, the grandfathers. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Big shoes to fill. Is there a, a second? Did second I hear a second? Uh, second. second. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's the end. This is all stock cast. Huh? Okay. That's also a Hall of Famer in the wrong way. Yeah, I didn't name that one. <laughs> but the, the, it's infamous. Oh, no, I, was looking, yeah. I wasn't looking at that one. I was looking at the, uh, the administrator. Uh, is the, Kayak man. Yeah, I was there. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> in both cases, by the way. On the... Uh, anyway. On, on the, on the, we dug on, on the unchecked box, also. Probably about 80% of those in the houses that All they had built to do. not go. All he had to do was check the box. Was the admin in 89. Uh, next one. Most famous question ever asked and answered. Why do you want to cut every tree down? Answer, because I can. <laughs> Aeronautics Commission? When he was in their no, profession. When he was working for Mass Aeronautics. Yeah, yeah. MAC. Because we can. Because we can. Okay, you can be seated now. <laughs> next one is 2-4-16-74. Uh, partial COC request for 39 mil pond. So... Commission will recall this order govern the full depth reconstruction and pavement of all driveways and walkways in the Mill Town, Mill Pond townhome condo, condo complex. Um, and the commission had denied the request, the homeowners association request for COC because the mitigation plantings and invasive species management um, weren't, wasn't properly undertaken, but the paving and, and all the, that was fine. Uh, and you guys actually released the um, paving contract as part of their part of his bond, so that's not an issue. Um, so it's still outstanding. Commission issued um, a an approval for a, a three-year vegetation management plan to do the invasive species management and such. So this. This unit is undergoing transaction, and this order came up on the deed, so they want to just release this unit from the order so they can move forward with their closing. Okay. Any questions, man? Jack? Um, are there any deficiencies on this particular property? Nope. Mm, none. No. It's no, not, it's not, it's not part of the planting there's area. There's no plantings and... No. Okay. Yep. I'm good. Joe? All set. Sean? No questions? Motion. We issue a partial temp compliance for 39 mil pond from DEP 242 1674. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And that's unanimous. Next one is a uh, 242 1739 request to which rock? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Next one is 242-1692-1210 Osgood Street. Request to continue till March. You can't even call the vote on that, so I'm going to call the vote on that to continue. Yeah. Oh, everybody in favor say aye. Is everybody okay with that? I know that there was some discussion about the date. We're meeting subcommittee next Monday okay. noon time. <laughs> Teleconference. Yeah. I was trying to keep up with those emails. You guys are yeah, fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. 
I also tried to keep up with it. I think I'm kept Yeah, up. we'll be prepared. <laughs> I think we can be prepared for the next meeting. Yeah. All right, yeah. go. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so we'll recommend we, how we do. continue. So moved. I have a question, procedural question. I understand that only two members can be part of the subcommittee. I understand it's you and Mayday. Is it is it uh, allowable to communicate uh, the information to the parties outside of the meeting? And that would be considered polling. So what we, in I, I imagine what we're going to intend to discuss to, is what we discussed at the last meeting. Yeah. Is what those parameters are that establishes yeah, I, statistically and the pH levels. So I'm trying over a period of time. Speaking directly to that, I'm trying to avoid a protracted mm -hmm. vote. We're looking to nail that down if, if, when we get so together. So you mean whatever comes out of this subcommittee meeting that I share with the with uh, the Well, whatever Africans comes team. out of the subcommittee meeting, if it's something, let's just say, uh, I'm not trying to th throw ants on anybody's picnic, but what if I don't agree with something? Now it's going to be a, 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 a discussion at, at a regular meeting well, when we yeah, deliver that, it. That's, that's, true, about, that's true with every subcommittee exactly. meeting. Okay. That's exactly what should happen. The, uh, okay, all right. And, and that's exactly what should happen. Open meeting law. Is what it is. We don't speak for Seminar. the commission. We speak for the, as no. we'll be considered the best interest. A quorum, right. even though you're not there. All right. So that will be in violation of the open meeting law. So I appreciate the information. I know how to proceed. He so just took four his of course, us have so that's There's four of us here who can't vote on this one. Okay. So we're going to vote continue. That's Yeah. Yeah, there's four of us. Yes. I second it, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Aye. We can. You two abstentions. Two abstentions, Jamie. Abstain. No, just just keep, <laughs> keep the, abs the guys that abstain yep. clear on the record. The yep. rest of us will abstain. battle it out. Yep. <laughs> okay. Next okay. one. All right. Yep. Enforcement order. Uh, 242-1859-0 Turnpike. So we'll just, if yeah, they so get. Okay. No one could make it to represent the um, the applicant, but they provided an email update. Uh, Williams and Sparagis has been engaged to do the SWIP monitoring, and they have been doing it. Um, Taylor went out there last week um, just to take a quick, quick peek and noticed some areas where there was flow, you know, from the site just kind of making its way into the basin and uh, thought that perhaps just to share that information and they provided um, a plan that kind of tweaks some of the erosion controls out there. Um, I highlighted in yellow. Um, so we had issued a letter when we thought there was no SWIP monitor on board we issued them a letter saying you're in not you're not in compliance with your enforcement order I think we can retract that letter but probably keep the existing enforcement order in place to just requires monitoring through the SWIP and then whenever they come back for their NOI we'll, we can you know resume the hearing was going to do the monitoring but he was informed that that wasn't good for us. <laughs> so, uh, Sparagas is doing it all, all now. Doing it the right way. So, That's all we ask. Yep. yep. So, we can probably just continue. I right, so to the know. April, I continue to the April 12th you this meeting. To be or does, yes. does this need to be ratified or, or is it already ratified? Um, what, what is well, it you just? guys could probably vote to just retract the letter of notice of non compliance. Leave this, the leave go, go ahead. leave the enforcement order in place, and just continue it to the April twelfth meeting. Oh. But these are enhancements. But yes. So, so noting this, you know, re referencing yes. this plan is now yeah. being part of it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Hey, Amy, I have a question. The, yeah. um, the silted water that is flowing, not into the treatment yeah. structure. Yeah. Um, and Taylor noticed that, took pictures. Um, is this, uh, th that should be something that's going to be taken care of permanently, um, not just with erosion control and mm -hmm. diverting the water. Is, I mean, are we on a path to do that? Well. Because it's just going to flow into the, it's going to flow where it shouldn't go anyway. And, true. Uh, may not be as but silted after. I think, not 
I mean, it's probably weak when I'm going to say this, but um, that flow that Taylor saw is out of the buffer zone, and the basin mostly is out of the buffer zone. So Flow until the buffer zone, but until, the until migrates into, into the buffer <laughs> zone, it. then we would take action. So I think it's does, if does they're they willing any, to do some upstream, you know, tweaks to further filter the water. But well, in the meantime, it's keep your fingers crossed, no flaction. Oh, oh it looks minimal, but right. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I just want to make sure it's addressed because it did. He did observe it, and it's a good observation. And um, I mean, is there a curb that they could put up? Is there a swale that they could put up to make sure it gets treated properly? And we should be moving in that direction. Yeah, is kind of what my point is. Right. I can I, add that to. I thought, I thought he said he was going to put up some more erosion controls. Yeah, on that plan. But erosion controls come out. All the, and, and they wear out and they come. They gotta be well. They gotta be, be maintained. They, they gotta be maintained because he's yeah. here with the he, he but, charge now. The, but of the erosion site. control is not a permanent feature of a. No, 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 but no, is no. there no way to compel a, a permanent solution on this? Is there no way? I, I understand what you're saying. It's not. Yeah, yeah. You're saying right now it's not jurisdictional. Right. Right now. So you, so we want to wait until it becomes jurisdictional. But part of the bigger well, project, uh, this is going to be in the project area. But the isn't store, it? Well, storm. yeah. This is just wait. You know, this is just interim waiting for their permits and what do you know why? to get yeah. into place, and then construction can start. It's okay. just so okay. if it never stops, then that's Jack's point. Well, is, I understood. Yeah. So, understood. So will this become part of the eventual notice of intent? Refresh your memory. Isn't that oh, already been before us? Be the buildings have already come. We're in the middle of the hearing. They're they're responding to third party peer review. Right. We have we've had one hearing so far. But. That plan encompasses this area. This this area goes away. It's not yes, the building and yeah. parking lot. The buildings are so this, that's so where the buildings are. In the permanent this a, sense, this a, is gone. This is so, a temporary. So it is addressed. But the question is, if they don't move forward with the project, this could persist. Yeah, yeah. That's what so you're then, saying. Well, so then, then we, we move at that point. We yeah, we move that way. Then they we continue yeah, to maintain yeah. the erosion control this, this right here, such so. that there's no uh, silter soil migration right. occurs into resource area. Right. Got it. Got if, it. You, if you remember, Jim, this right here. Got it. Yeah. It's long, the long, the, the long, long stretch of the long building. The big circular <coughs> drive behind it. And, yeah, yeah. The big, the big building was over here. Yeah. Okay. So we just want to continue this. Yeah. To okay. April twelfth. So do we have to vote on that? Well, you guys could. Uh, we wrote a letter saying you're not in compliance with your enforcement order because, because you didn't have a SWIP right. operator. So, we, operator. Should, so I mean, we should retract that. Yes. We should yep. require that the erosion controls be fortified in accordance with the plan submitted yep. and that those erosion controls be maintained in a functional state to prevent migration of silts and soils into resource areas until such time as the, uh, yep. the site is stable. Okay. That's the new voice, amended of uh, voice. Amend, okay. Do we need a motion to uh, amend the uh, enforcement order? So moved. Second. Actually, I just read it. I thought you just uh, did that. I just read it. You yeah. seconded it. All right. All those in favor. It's quite detailed, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He likes the <laughs> motion all, and all second. <laughs> and all third. All those in favor say okay. aye. 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 Opposed, and that's not nice. Next one is my favorite one. Uh, uh, flagship, uh, one, 85 and 115 flagship drive and 400 Willow. So we have Which is associated with, with 40 two, flagship. Two of others. Two Beautiful. Two of others Beautiful. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't be here tonight, but. Um, so, you know, they want to work with you guys. Um, but at the same time, you know, they want to make sure that the violator s somehow is still held responsible, either monetarily or whatever. Um, so I consulted with town council. We're going to have a Zoom call with Mass DEP's general counsel just to flesh it out present, you know, our quandary and our, our problem and see if they 
have um, guidance to provide. Jill Provencal will also be on the call. So um, kind of that's where we're at. I, I um, recorded yeah. the amended enforcement order against 40 flagship. I recorded that. Okay, so we understand the strategy that we used in getting advice from council, particularly DEP, is a good thing. Um, I think the abundance should consider themselves to be allies with us. That's what we're trying to accomplish here. The responsible party, we know who it is, and everybody knows. But we want the abundance to know who it is. Yeah, yes. And that if they, if that Absolutely. we are all in this together, you right. want your property cleaned and we want it cleaned. Right. That's right. All right, so we should, we'll leave the enforcement yeah. order in place. Yep. Until we hear from 400, well, hopefully soon. Yeah, I don't know if And then we'll get some guidance from D legal D DEP yeah. and go from there. All right. So we need a motion. We don't, we don't no, we're just leaving motion. it in place. That's just an update. Just leave it in place. Yeah, and we'll, we'll just, we'll just continue okay, so it to the, the 22nd. Floor. Okay. Uh, 242. 1692 12th and Street requ requesting continue to 322. So, so, so. Second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, that's unanimous. Uh, 242 1428 Turnpike Street, Merrimack Condos, Vernal Pool summary. So, Commissioner will call issuing a full and complete certificate of compliance, but one of the ongoing conditions required that the two Vernal Pools on site. Uh, continue to be monitored um, for a period of time for th three years after issuance of the certificate of compliance. Uh, Patrick Garner had been re remained on the project and retained for that monitoring. He provided a summary report, which you guys have. Um, those vernal pools have been. Um, monitored versus a control that was on Berry Street, a control pool, and their um, parameters of uh, monitoring have been, you know, pretty much parallel, and there hasn't been, you know, any uh, evidence of the two pools on site being degraded substantially at all. Uh, one year he did find like 15 egg masses in, in the two pools on site, so it's still functioning. And so basically the language of that condition, um, but shall be reconsidered three years after the issuance of a certificate of compliance. So um, I said, you know, we need to take it to the commission, give, give me a summer report so they have it in their hand and, the, and you guys can consider whether you want to sunset this requirement or, or, I mean, I'm, or set up a different um, monitoring schedule. So what is it right now? One year, uh, three years, now it's one year? It's not anything. It's He's completed it. This is this could be the historic last piece of document yeah. on this project. Yeah, well, maybe, but could be. It's it's March right now. Mm -hmm. This is the time of year when we observe and and investigate vernal pools. I think that this we One should take shot. we should take no action right now on this, and require that the that the act the monitoring take place now during the months of March and April to measure any degradation over the past three years and then we should consider it at that point. We're only, we're only less than 30 days away from critter activity. Why would we walk away from it now? Reconsider it, what, mid-May? I mean, uh, well, even way, way back, it began it in the month of June. I think we should conclude by July 1. Well, I mean, the, 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 for lack of a better term, the peepers will be started. They're just going to get started in, in a couple weeks. And, um, you know, that's a tight site. Uh, I was over there with Amy once when we were discussing uh, snow uh, storage. And uh, I don't know if you recall the time we met there. It's, it's tight. I, I haven't seen one. That's as tight as any site we have. And 
if these pools, if these rental pools have not become degraded, it, it's really, it would be a credit to, to, the, to the site, but I want to, I want to see if there's any deg degradation at all. Um, I, I, I would, I would, I think if we could take no action on this, I'd just continue it generally on what, what would be the correct procedure to do. Well, okay. if the condition says that we would reconsider three years after the issuance of the COC, what is the date of the COC? Because if it's, it's in, are we within the three oh, years? Oh, yeah, we're after, so we're we, after, yeah. The three years is, com is completed. So we should affirmatively, ex affirmatively extend that condition until July 1 of this year. And that'll give it that one last round. Because right now, they, they're in compliance. If, if they right. think that after three years of issuance, they, we, all we are required to do is reconsider. We just have. We've reconsidered and said no, yeah. by July 1. I, mean, think, I think at the minimum, I think that makes sense at the minimum. And then... At the, well, maybe at the minimum. We can, by, are we looking at a fall? Well, we want to see what... Well? Well, let's see what the report is in July. We, 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 I mean, let's, you have to get the report. What, if, the report is, if the report is incredibly positive, then I, I have a better comfort level than I have right now today. Um, Patrick's letter seems to indicate that things are going in the right direction, that they yep. were sort of static for a while, and then the, the past couple of years, the egg mass has increased, and... Um, well, the, I mean, some of these parameters look like they were moving in the right direction. Does our, do, do we have data that supports that? Yeah, we, and, and I have. And he, he's reported that to us all along? Yeah, I've got okay. them all. Okay, and you, you agree with these conclusions? Okay, so yeah. good, good. Oh, yeah, he was, he's, he's been religious about and, and, and I'm not submitting. Yep. I mean, yep. no disrespect to anybody. I just think no, that I know. we're right, we're two weeks away from breeding and, Migration. I've done tons of rental pool surveys. I've never done any in February, ever. It's you always start in like March, yeah. minimum. Yeah. And it's yeah. we're only in the first meeting in March. Let's yeah. let's, let's just take a run at this. And right. Not to say, again to your point. Not to say his findings aren't right, but you know I do think we need. Would you feel a lot better if you get a very positive report in July? I very much so. Very much so. So what do you, Joe? <coughs> Joe, you recommend July what? Like, let me take another shot at this. Okay. This is the form of a motion. So, right. so, I, won't so trip up, I won't trip up on it, all right? <laughs> um, that in, in accordance with the order conditions and condition number, whatever it is, right. that we are reconsidering the three years after the issue of certificate compliance for continued uh, biological monitoring, and that to that end, we are going to require a spring 2023 monitoring and reporting cycle to be issued to us no later than July 1, 2023. And upon review of that, if the conditions warrant a reconsideration, we will do so at the first meeting in July. Second. Third. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. All righty. Decision time. NACC 301-81 Paddock. Okay. So I think to the um, project description, I should add clearing of vegetation over the uh, septic system trench and that, footprint. And that, that would be allowed on a continuing, ongoing basis by hand. Okay. To remove, to keep the system free of woody vegetation in the future. Should we just say annual mowing? Because that's kind of this. Not really. Do we want to be more specific, or I think you're going to go out there. You're going to go out there with a brush whacker and knock it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it, okay. No, that's good. If we don't need, he to wants be to leave leave the leaf litter and the other scrub behind. He just wants to take the bigger stuff out. Yeah, right. And, and kill it off. But yeah. I think mowing over time becomes a lawn. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. And, and he's already stated <laughs> yeah. no more lawn. Uh, but. Do they have an area that qualifies as, as nesting area that might want to be cut once a year? No. That would be, I didn't see any you don't have, Not from the photograph. No, like nothing just, like that, okay. Just, All right. Yeah. Okay. Are you satisfied with the, re uh, the replanting along the, the borderline? Yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. And we'll, and we'll put posters in front of it. 
they're not going to last like six months. Well, the very tasty. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, we can. So now that we have planting, do we want to do survival? Condition for survival. Is he cutting any? He's not cutting anything in the no disturbance, though, is he? No. So I wouldn't put the survival stuff in. He's, he's offering an olive branch. You know, we're doing some brush clearing above the septic system, which he's allowed to do to maintain the system. Okay. And because I, I, I think holding to a survival rate is going to think be replanting those things for years. Mm -hmm. I think they're just going to get cobbled up. Maybe just an inspection after they've been planted to make sure. Because that they, that they're in. Box, make sure yeah. done. Okay. I mean, if he was using it as compensation or restoration for disturbance in the 25, different conversation. Right. But he's not I, doing. He's just doing it to make us feel good about it. Yeah, just to keep the shed where it is encroaching into the 50. That's really that's why they did it. Uh, all right. So plantings. Is that area currently lawn? It is. I mean, do we want to have them stop mowing? Planting and stopping yeah. within 10 feet of it? That'll yeah, do it. I think That'll so. do it. Right. <coughs> yeah. Because I was going to say, put the marker, the posts and the markers in yeah. front of that planting area and let it go Because even, even if the high bush go away, at least it'll, it'll revert it'll, back. It'll, it'll come back. It'll back to something, right. Okay. Yep. The buffer zone enhancements within the 25 foot. Yes. Okay. I thought you asked if it was. And it no, the, the brush clearing is not. Oh, okay. It's actually planting it. in the 25? Yeah, well, because, for the shed. Because it's of the shed. already deserved, d disturbed. To make up for the shed staying in the 50. Right. Yeah. That's why. So I think we're, I'm, I think we're trying to wrestle with the survival rate. I mean, typically, we require that if it was restoration. It's not right. that. Right. It's so he's planting that as an enhancement, buffer zone yes. enhancement. Re re we're regaining some of the 25. With, I'm saying that instead of holding them to a survival rate, which is probably not likely, if we got an additional 10 feet of non-mowing, that'll all revert back and we'll get what we want. Okay. We'll, we'll truly get a, get, a, a right. restored, a naturally restored buffer. In the notice stuff. Okay. So you want like a ten foot strip all the way around the wetland? He showed. He showed a little planting plan. I just I would just around where the plantings are. I would say you know ten feet upland in, from upgrading from there. Ten up. feet inside the tree line within the limits of the twenty five foot no disturb. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. Better, better that than have the high bush blueberry getting eaten by the deer after year one. They're gonna get eaten no matter what. So, are you saying in, instead instead of having them plant? Instead oh, of. Oh. I'll let them plant it. Just hold, don't hold them to a okay. survival rate. Okay. Yeah. No survival ship. In honest to God, looking at the way the yard is configured, he doesn't lose a bit of use of his yard no, by doing that. No, he doesn't. Yeah. Okay. That's what, that's what I was talking about. Just to, to yeah, yeah, out. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. In perp, and we'll put that as a perpetual condition. What? Eight crayons. Yeah. Everybody all set? How big is the pond? 30,000? Three. How many? <laughs> is the bond okay? The bond's fine. Three? Yeah, that's fine. 
If they were moving the shed, it would have been different, but they're not moving the shed. Okay, need a motion? I move that we uh, grant the order of conditions for NACC number 301-81 Paddock Lane is drafted and amended. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. <laughs>